Hey there! Welcome back to the Noctis on YouTube. Life underwater has always been captivating and holds deep mysteries. Not only that, the ocean has also provided alluring resources for many living creatures throughout history, including humans. This vast ocean has been the stage for one of the most remarkable and mysterious human groups, known as the Sea Nomads. As far as the eye can see, oceans all around the world have been home to these Sea Nomads as they explore the depths beneath the surface. For them, the sea with its fascinating hidden world has become a part of their lives, these sea nomads are true athletes who boldly confront extraordinary pressures, adverse weather, and natural hazards to reveal the beauty and wonders beneath the sea. They have also transformed the way we view the ocean and made significant contributions to science, environmental preservation, and our understanding of life underwater. They are nomadic people who live on the water. For hundreds of years, the Bajau have spread to various regions, such as the Sabah region in Malaysia and various areas in Indonesia. In Indonesia, they have further dispersed to various other regions such as Sulawesi, Kalimantan, as well as East Nusa Tenggara and West Nusa Tenggara. Specifically for the Bajau residing in Kalimantan, they are believed to have migrated from the northern Philippines to Kalimantan during prehistoric times. These Bajau communities have also begun to settle along the coasts of East Kalimantan and South Kalimantan before occupying the surrounding islands. The Bajau people not only live on the water, but also depend on the vast and deep ocean for their livelihood. They dive into the sea to catch fish, octopuses, crabs and other natural elements that can be used for crafting. Typically, the fish they catch is either consumed by themselves or sold alongside the sea crafts they create. When we hold our breath and submerge ourselves in the water, our body responds with a diving reflex. The body exhibits responses such as a slowed heart rate, narrowed blood vessels, and contracting spleen. All of these reactions help us conserve energy during oxygen deprivation. Nevertheless, the normal human body can only hold its breath underwater for a few seconds. However, this does not apply to the sea nomads, specifically the Bajau people. The Bajau people are capable of diving for up to 13 minutes at a depth of 230 feet or approximately 70 meters. What's unique is that they don't require any diving equipment to venture into the deep oxygen-deprived waters. While diving, the Bajau people rely solely on a spear to hunt for their prey. This extraordinary ability of the Bajau people piqued the interest of Melissa Ilardo, a leading researcher at the Center for Geogenetics, University of Copenhagen. She wondered if the Bajau people had genetically adapted to spend longer periods of time underwater. To satisfy her curiosity, Melissa Ilardo spent several months in Jaya Bhakti, Pajimana, Bangai, central Sulawesi, Indonesia to observe the habits of this community. During her research, she was assisted by an interpreter. Nonetheless, she made an effort to learn the Indonesian language to communicate directly with the Bajau people. She also compared the habits of the Bajau people with another community, the Saluan people, who reside in the Bangai Regency of Central Sulawesi. The Saluan people live in mountainous areas and do not have the same diving lifestyle as the Bajau. On her first visit, she introduced herself and explained the purpose of her scientific project to the Bajau people. 
This initial encounter only fueled her growing interest and curiosity about the community. It was during her second visit that Ilardo began bringing her scientific equipment, including a portable ultrasound machine and saliva collection tools. Alongside her team, she traveled to different homes, taking images of the spleens of the Bajau people. She conducted similar examinations on the Salawan people and then compared the two sets of samples upon returning to Copenhagen. Her research yielded surprising results. The average size of the Bajau people's spleens was 50% larger than those of the Saluan people. This evidence demonstrated that genetic mutations for larger spleens have provided the Bajau people with a genetic advantage, enabling them to thrive in the depths of the sea. While the spleen may not be the most exceptional organ, it does play a significant role. Technically, humans can live without a spleen, but it assists in supporting the immune system and recycling red blood cells. The spleen also serves as a crucial organ during diving. When the body is under pressure or holding its breath underwater, the spleen releases more oxygen into the bloodstream. Furthermore, Ilardo delved deeper into the DNA of the Bajau people. From her analysis, Ilardo identified a gene called PDE-10A in the Bajau people that was not found in the Salawan people. PDE-10A is known to regulate the thyroid hormone, which controls spleen size. In mice, this hormone has been linked to spleen size. Some manipulated mice with lower levels of this hormone exhibited smaller spleens. By effectively studying the Bajau people, researchers can begin to understand hypoxia, a condition in which humans rapidly lose oxygen. Not only do the Bajau people possess larger spleens, but they also demonstrate high adaptability to their environmental conditions, which has helped them develop their diving abilities in deep seas. Through genetic inheritance and regular training, the human body adapts to extreme heights and depths. When a person dives into the ocean, the increased water pressure causes the blood vessels in the lungs to fill with more blood. In extreme cases, blood vessels can rupture and lead to death. The Bajau people have developed this capability through genetic inheritance and regular practice. With genetic inheritance and frequent swimming training, the walls of the Bajau people's lungs have adapted to the depths. Their lungs likely become more elastic and their diaphragms more flexible. This ability of the Bajau people inspired director James Cameron in the making of the film Avatar, The Way of Water. Apart from the Bajau, the Mokan people have also dedicated their lives to ocean exploration. Most Mokan people inhabit the areas around the Andaman Sea in Myanmar and the west coast of Thailand. These sea gypsies, as they are also known, can still be found from the Philippines to Kalimantan. In Myanmar, they are referred to as Salon, while in Thailand they are called Chao Le, meaning sea people, or Chao Nam, which means people from the waters. The Mokan people are closely related to the Urak Lawoi and Orang Laut communities. The Mokan people belong to the Austronesian ethnic group. They communicate in the Mokan language and maintain their own culture and religious beliefs. Traditionally, they spend their time hunting for fish in the ocean, while Mokan women live in villages built along the coast. The Mokan or Salon live on lightweight and comfortable wooden boats, which make their lives easier, especially during fishing expeditions in the open sea. Their way of life is remarkable. During the summer and winter seasons, they rely on hunting marine resources such as various types of fish, octopuses, shellfish, clams, mollusks, ambergris, seaweed and much more. 
their catches are collected and sold on the mainland. However, during rough weather, they seek refuge on nearby islands, where they begin constructing elevated huts made of bamboo, sticks, or whatever materials they can find. Afterward, they commence hunting for marine animals around the island. Similar to the Bajau people, the Mokan are known for their impressive ability to dive in deep waters. They can dive for 8 to 10 minutes to hunt various marine creatures. When diving, they do not require specialized diving equipment or oxygen tanks. The remarkable skills of the Mokan people caught the attention of Anna Gislin, a researcher from Lund University, Sweden, who decided to conduct further research on their way of life. In 1999, Gislin flew to Thailand and began observing the lives of Mokan children. During her stay, she noticed that Mokan children effortlessly plunged into the water, then dove to collect shellfish, clams and sea cucumbers. Her observations led her to wonder about the clarity of these children's vision underwater. To investigate this, she conducted tests on Mokan children by having them dive and place their heads against a board with vertical or horizontal lines. Whenever they saw the cards underwater, they had to resurface and indicate what they saw. The test was conducted repeatedly, and to increase the level of difficulty, the lines on the cards were made progressively smaller. From these experiments, Gislin discovered the fact that underwater, Mokan children could see twice as clearly as the average European children who also underwent similar tests. Gislin speculated that the vision of Mokan children had undergone a drastic adaptation, a kind of small-scale evolution that altered how their eyes perceived, or they had simply learned how to use their eyes differently in water. Logically, this assumption seemed unlikely because fundamental changes in vision would render these children unable to see on land. But based on the simple test, Mokan children could see clearly on land just as clearly as European children. She believed that the children of the Mokan people were manipulating their own vision. She also revealed, based on her research, that the pupils of Mokan children could contract to the smallest limits ever recorded in humans. These children had eye accommodation abilities above the average human. They could make their pupils extremely small while simultaneously adjusting the thickness of the lens inside their eyes underwater. This was similar to what is done by seals and dolphins.